very much, Brother Leo. And I notice that people are just sometimes a little, you're turned sideways, you want to just turn right around, I would just do that. Just move your chairs right around so we can all look at each other. At the As the brother has just said that I belong to one organization, the Christian Businessman Organization. I just happened to show you my card of the fellowship so you know how I think of the Christian Businessman as the only organization that I belong to. Because I think they have something that we all have in common, Christ. I want to greet you fine group of people here this morning and night before last I was talking to your president Demas Sakarian which is a very bosom friend of mine and he sends special greetings to each and every one of you from the chapters around the world and he just called me to come as quick as I could from Africa back to to Stuttgart Germany where they're holding off now to see if we could, if I could be their night nice speaker. And he sends a, a, a special invitation to all you people for the service that's to be held in Philadelphia, the beginning of the 30th, I believe it is, of June until the 4th of July in Philadelphia. And there, the Lord willing, I'm to speak for them again at uh, this great convention in Philadelphia Hall, I believe it is, I'm not sure. But you're all invited to come. And now, it's such a privilege to stand before such a lovely group of people. And we do not realize that what could happen right at a breakfast like this this morning. Around the world, I spoke for the Christian businessman. Los Angeles, sometimes we have our thousands at the breakfast, which I had the privilege of speaking many times. I've seen the blind get up at their sight, the cripples walk away, Glory. and hundreds of, of people, businessmen, doctors, attorneys, critics that come in, just fall right under the power of God. And just, uh, 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 you've got something, gentlemen. I remember this one thing, we're all in here of one belief this morning. Here's what we got. We got something in common, but we got to know how to use it. See? Like a gun's good to hunt with, but you've got to know how to use it. So that's the way the gospel is. So let's use it to the glory of God to get every soul in the kingdom that we know how to get into the kingdom. And now, may God bless this little group here together and just keep having these breakfasts and above everything, keep it spiritual. Never let that spirit die. Sing those old-fashioned songs. Clap your hands. Praise the Lord. Well, you've got to keep. I'm a southerner. I, I'm emotional. Yeah. I can prove to you anything without emotion is dead. That's right, brother. And if your religion has got a little emotion, you better bear it and get one that. It. Yeah. It's dead. So we got to have the emotion. Jesus said, if they hold their peace, the rocks will immediately cry. Something life and death can't exist together. Where Christ comes, he never preached a funeral in all his life. Because death can't stand around where life is. Right, brother. They raised from the dead. When he comes into a group of people, life comes. Glory. Because he is life. Yes. And we love him this morning supremely with all of our hearts. And we offer to him in these little meetings the very adoration of our hearts that we truly love him. And it's little meetings like this. Excuse me. Sorry to interrupt, but there's still a car, 142374, that will be immediately towed away unless it's immediately moved. 142374. Uh, that's me, <laughs> But it could be not in our group here. It could be someone upstairs visiting or anything just from the car in. So we appreciate the brethren doing this, though, so that no one will be inconvenient when they, they leave. This is where I have my joy. Just get a group of, you know the old southern expression, birds of a feather? Yeah. Locked yeah, together? Yeah. I'm so glad to have feathers like these birds here. Oh, <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> it's just something, it's, it's not a healing service. The healing service, you're under that strain of, yeah. my, 
by the anointing and when I go in the room in the afternoon and there stay alone with God and come out then you have to watch because Satan is, is a real enemy and he's sitting at any time too confused and as tired as I am now it could be easy to be, get confused but when you come this way you can just see like you got 50 miles of elbow room yeah. you can just sit around and have a good time look at all your faces and see the smiles and the a chair in the presence of Christ. Well, that's just a, a real spiritual gastronomical jubilee to me <laughs> just to get together to hear it. And to hear that singing, I love that good old-fashioned singing. Yeah. If there's anything I love, it's singing. And uh, I, if anything I, I hate is an overtrained boy. You know, one of them kinds of the holes that get blue in the face and see how long you hold your breath and come back down? They're not singing to the glory of God. They're seeing how long they can hold their breath. <laughs> I think there's nothing more beautiful than good old fashioned Pentecostal singing. To the Just hanging in the God have glory. That's right. If you couldn't care a tune in a coal bucket, just sing it out. Make a joyful voice to the Lord. There's nothing formal about this, and God is without form. That's, That's what the Bible says. Yeah. So He doesn't have a formal people. He has That's an informal people. Everywhere, the Spirit's doing anything. Amen. Oh, we're so happy for that. And now, in these coming services, I am trusting, and I want to say this with all sincerity, because I realize there's people here from different places, but I have never, since I left New York, ever met a night or the first time, the first service, that faith was right there to meet us as I have in this city. Wonderful. Prayer has been made here somewhere. I don't know where it's been, but somebody has been talking to the Lord. I appreciate the little brother there this morning that led in prayer that had given a testimony. As soon as the man got up and was speaking to the Lord, I said, he talked to him before. Everybody knows who he was talking to. And that's good. Soul winning the greatest thing. And brethren, we're at the end time. We're, we're here at the end of the road. You, you are saved, and I believe you're going to heaven. And that's true, but you'll never have an opportunity like you got right now. And the aeons that is to come... What if you knew that if you had the opportunity to come back as a mortal to do some witness and actually been there before and you see how lovely he is, it'll be, it'll be too late then. Let's do it now while we have the opportunity. Let's be on day and night. Some time ago down in the Southland, there's an old Negro. And one night at an old plantation meeting where they would have had their supper. Now, of course, I believe it's dinner for you all up here. The, you have your dinner at night. You have to yeah, like yeah. I'm at home, man. So, <laughs> when you talk about that dinner, I, I feel like I missed the meal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have breakfast, dinner, and supper. If, I, if, if supper is my dinner, then when do I get my dinner? <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, this, and you know, we're right in that, folks. Sure, we are. Because it was the Lord's supper, not his dinner, you know, so we were there. <laughs> so then, uh, down there they were having a supper on the old plantation, and there was uh, an old Negro who gave his life to the Lord Jesus. Afterwards, I tell you, it's, it's wonderful to hear those when they sing that old-fashioned fa- old songs of and it's such a melody as this, like this. I will arise and go to Jesus. He will embrace me in His arms. Did you ever hear a melody yeah. like that? Yeah. Uh, that's the way they sang it, but oh my. Oh, yeah. The Spirit's there. Yeah. <laughs> it's from their heart. And at such a place, this old Negro got saved. And the next morning he was out telling the folks that he was he was saved and he was free. Now this was doing the slavery. And he said and it got to the, the plantation owner's ears. So he went out to him and he said, Mose, what's this I hear you're saying this morning among the slaves that you are free? He said, Yes, boy. He said, I'm free this morning. He said, Come up to the office, Mose. He went up to the office. He said, sit down. 
He said, Moses, what did you say you was? He said, Boss, that I'm still your slave, but that I'm free from the law of sin and death. Christ set me free, I said, a little old me. He said, Moses, do you really mean that? He said, Yes, I do, boss. He said, Well, Moses, I'm going down to sign the emancipation this morning. I'll set you free as a slave. Preach your, the gospel to your brethren. He said, I'm a Christian too. He said, You go among your brethren and preach the gospel. After years of service, the old Negro will come to his death. Many of his white brethren had gathered in to see, see him and shake his hands for the last time. And he was laying in a coma. And after a while, he woke up, looked around, and he said, Am I back to earth again? And they said, Moses, where were you? He said, Oh, I just got in the door. And he said, I looked and I saw him. And he said, This old darkest heart was so thrilled, I never wanted to come this way again. And he said, while I was standing there, he said, there was an angel walked up and said to me, Moses, come over here. I want to give you your robe and your crown. He said, don't talk to me about robe and crown. I don't want no robe and crown. So what do you desire then, Moses, for that long life and the service you give? So just let me look at him for a thousand years. Hallelujah. I think that's the feeling of all of us. Glory. It is the interest of our money and our businesses, or what we do, or the testimonies you give, sir. Just let me look at you. That's what I expect to do someday. Crawl up to his feet. Kiss those precious feet that were scarred for me. Let me look at him a little while. I don't want to mention just a corner somewhere where I can in fellowship with you, brethren. Sitting here looking this morning, and I'm looking across to these young people, lovely. I asked about a young couple here that's just been married recently, and Brother Sweet told me they're on fire for God. I noticed an older man, some of you gray headed, probably older than I, preaching the gospel when I was a boy. I thought to myself, as I was eating and listening to different ones talk, I wonder if this is our last time to meet like this on earth. Could be, you know. But it isn't our last time to meet. I think some of you men was out here on the corner, preaching the gospel and beating an old guitar, thrown in jail and run out of the city for the very cause, paving the road that I'm running smooth on. You're the man that should be honored. You're the women. It should be honored. It should be you up here and not me. When I was a sinner boy, I kind of straddled a little horse trying to see if you could ride a bucking horse along it. Or roping calves or something. You were on the corner preaching gospel. I was running horse racing. You're the man women deserve the honor. You should stand here. But you were making a road that I could come behind. I'll meet you again, brother and sister. It may not be another breakfast, but there will be a time when that great wedding supper will be spread out across the sky. And when we get there, it will be different. When I look across the table and see you men and women, no doubt the little tear of joy will trickle down our cheeks as we shake each other's hands. Yes, Brother Brandon, at that Bangor meeting that morning, Oh, I remember you. Oh, here's so and so. And us sitting there weeping, I can just see the king come out in his glory. glory. Walk down along the line, wipe all the tears off your eyes. They don't cry, children. It's all over now. You're home. Glory. Enter into the joys of the Lord, which has been prepared for you since the foundation of the world. Yeah. That's the day I look forward to. I'm your brother. I'm here to help you to put my shoulders to the wheel to push the load that you've got rolling down the road. Pave in the way. God bless you now. Let's bow our heads just a moment now. Merciful God, it's such a privilege to come to you, to come into this divine presence where the units and the gifts and the movings of God's Holy Spirit is working amongst His dear children. 
And here we are today, sitting here as maybe strangers to each other, but we're not strangers. We're fellow citizens of the kingdom. We're pilgrims and strangers to the earth, but we're citizens of thy kingdom. First time meeting, but beloved, in the Lord. <clears throat> we would ask that you would bless us together. <clears throat> Continue this spirit, Lord. May it never die Amen. away from the people. May every minister be blessed and every worker, every member of the laity. May souls be born. We love you, Father. And our hearts just burn when we hear your precious name. You hear these old songs of the redeemed. We ask now that you'll bless our little effort in the city. Oh, God, start an old-fashioned revival fire. And every church and every heart, call the elected Lord. From the pool rooms and the gambling dens, from the places of ill fame and off the streets into the kingdom, heal your poor suffering children, Lord. Declare thy presence and love to them. That's the words that we shall now read. And may we fellowship around the reading of the word. For we ask that in the name of the Lord Jesus, our Savior, Amen. Just for a little text, and I know we can't keep this too long, but I'd like to speak to you just on a little subject or a little drama, if I could have your attention for a few moments. And it's found in the book of Luke 19, chapter 4th verse. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. It must have been a terrible night on the little fella. He couldn't rest. He would toss from one side to the other side of the bed because he... He happened to live in a strange day, very odd, because the church and the message that was going forth was at end with each other. You see, he was an Orthodox, a Jewish believer, and it uh, came that in that day there had been a, a rumor of a Nazarene prophet one called Jesus of Nazareth, which was claimed to be the son of Joseph, a carpenter. And it must have been very strange how the people felt in those days that a man who came along with a supernatural ministry that was absolutely contrary to the Jewish beliefs They didn't believe in such a thing. They thought all the days of these things had passed with Moses many years ago. And not spiritual minded enough to know that God remains the same. And that they were at a junction of time. So it must have been very hard on him. Because he believed what his priest said and was forbidden by the church to attend any of such meetings that this prophet was holding. And there was all kinds of talk about this prophet. And so he had a restless night for his wife, Rebecca. She was a believer of this prophet. She attended the meetings and she had told him many strange things that had happened. Which he, consulting his priest, said, Now that's nonsense. There's just no need of believing nothing like that, Rebecca. We belong to one of the finest churches there is in the country. Our synagogue is the greatest. And here I am, a businessman of this city. My name is Zacchaeus. 
And I own the greatest restaurant there is in this city. And I have the greatest business and we're respected people. Therefore, it's not ethical for me to degrade my prestige, to dip myself down into a group like some fanatic prophet, as you would call him, who's going about which none of the priests or rabbis will have anything to do with. And in my position as a businessman, it would hurt my business if I become associated with such a thing. And Rebecca, it would be better for you if you just discontinued your following this so-called prophet. This got on Rebecca's heart. So you see, she began to pray for Zacchaeus. So him being a businessman, very much in the world, in the church league, yet she thought, that if this prophet was what he said he was, the Son of God, that she wanted her husband to believe on him. That's a real true wife. Every businessman should have that type of wife that would pray for him. Don't criticize him. Just pray for him. That's the best way to get it into Christ. And you know there's something about it when you pray for someone real sincerely, you know, it, it kind of makes them restless. I don't know whether you ever had any yeah. experience of that or not. Yeah. But God begins to move and answer the prayer. Sometimes the husband becomes more irritable than ever. But just remember, God's answering prayer. He knows how to do it. A man has to come to the end of his rope sometimes before he'll recognize, or maybe God has to lay him on his back, sick, hurt, until he'll look up. But God has strange ways of doing things, but his ways are always right. So Rebecca had been praying for her dear little husband, Zacchaeus, and all night long he had tossed and rolled and tumbled. See, God was answering Rebecca's prayer. I wonder if there's any Rebecca's here that's ever been praying for their businessman husband. Then when come close to morning, Rebecca had kind of dozed off to sleep, but all night long in her heart, she'd been saying, Thank you, Lord. I know you're working with him. I can just tell you. What's the matter, Zacchaeus? She'd say often through the night. Oh, I don't know. It must be my business is on my mind. He's just trying to find a little escape. That's yeah. all. It was God dealing with him. So as the night passed on in early morning, Rebecca kind of dozed off to sleep. Early in the morning, she found Zacchaeus up, grooming himself. And he goes to the, to the robe and uh, wardrobe brother, and he gets the best robe that he's got and puts it on. You see, there was a special occasion going to be in the city that day. It had been noise that brought that that prophet was going to visit that city that day and was going to dine while he was there. And Zacchaeus is all tore up because he's going over to Mr. Levinsky's restaurant. <laughs> well, of course my restaurant is the best. <laughs> and if my wife be a follower of such a fellow, why wouldn't he bring that business my way? You see, he was Jewish. And he wanted the business. And he knew this prophet, so-called, would attract a lot of attention. So there must be uh, the business come his way. And he was one of the great businessmen of the city. So why shouldn't this prophet come his way or pass his way? So he, that night, after a restless night and many dreams of of torment and so forth. The next morning he grooms himself real nice and Rebecca pulled her head out from under the cover and said, Zach is dear, where goest thou so early? Oh, I thought I'd step out and have a, a bit of fresh air. You know, you can find plenty of excuses when conviction's on. Yeah. We all know that. Yeah. I'm just going out for a bit of fresh air. And he is Perks the perfume on, fixes his hair down, and 
Oh, he's just all groomed up, and out on the street he walks, and Rebecca sits up and raises up the window shade and looks out. She sees Zacchaeus all straightened up, you know, like a real typical good businessman. Walking down the street with the best of his clothes on, you know. She gets down on her knees and she says, Dear God, I thank you because I believe that you're dealing with my husband today. And we know that your dear son, although with the bad name that he has among the people as a fanatic and some uh, evil spirit possessing him, yet I believe him to be your dear son. And I pray thee, dear God, that somehow you will have my husband in his presence. That's the way to pray. And don't let him be critical, but just let your dear son do something that will convince my husband that that is the Messiah. And she thanked God for it and went about her work. Let's follow Zacharias for a few minutes. Walks down the street. It's very early. Not many people out. But he said, you know, if that certain fellow, I'm going to meet him today and I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. You know, conviction sometimes works that way. And he said, I'll tell him all. And he's got my wife to leave her church. Why, I'm one of the presbyters. <laughs> so I tell you, I'm, I'm going to tell him all about it when I see him. Just wait. I'll tell him. As he walks down the streets, you know, well groomed. And I hope that when I'm standing around it, many of my business associates are standing there. I would like to have um, the rabbi standing here so he could see where I stand. And I, I want to let him know that I don't believe in no such fanaticism. So I'll go down. He surely will enter from the south gate because he's been in Galilee. And he'll be coming this way, so I'll go down to the gate and meet him. Right there when he enters the gate, I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. When I get there, not knowing that Rebecca had covered that all over with prayer. You see. <laughs> so when he gets down, he begins to hear a noise. And he tries to get a little closer and... When he does, he finds all around the gate. People are hanging on the fence and on the walls. And why, he couldn't even get close at all. And then everybody crowded in the, the police trying to get the people back. What's the matter here? So he said, well, I guess maybe I'm not the only one down here. And just look at the kind of people there is who stand here. These people are the poor people. Of course, you know, I'm just a businessman, so <clears throat> I, I shouldn't be associated with such, but anyhow, I'll get myself up here to the corner. Well, come to find out he was little, just a little bitty guy. So it's to me there, he couldn't look over their heads. And he was on his way through and get back out of the way. I'm Zacchaeus. You know, sometimes people get that idea in their head. Uh, you're somebody. <laughs> Who are you anyhow? Six foot of earth. When you die, you got a soul. And that soul's going to take either its journey upward or downward. And it's going to determine by the way you accept Christ. Turning down, you go down. Receiving, you go with him. But you're not very much anyhow, none of us. I was standing at a little you see him here not long ago and looking at two boys who were uh, given, looking on a little card there It said the actual weight of a 150 pound man and the value of that weight. You know how much you're worth if you weigh 150 pounds? That's the male. You're worth 84 cents. <laughs> That's right. You got this about enough potash in you to, and enough calcium and, a, and a, just enough water to sprinkle a hen's nest and 84 cents and then you put a, a $500 mink coat on it. A hat. A $100 suit. Turn your nose up if it would rain you drown. And then think you're somebody. All right. What are you? 
you're worth 84 cents. And you'll go to a restaurant and you pick up a bowl of soup that had a fly in it, you'd turn it down that quick. Yes, sir, I won't have nothing to do with that. Well, I'll see if the paper knows it's a chamber of commerce. What about the president of the restaurant, the owner, what it is? See, you watch that 84 cents. You won't put nothing poison in that. But let the devil pass anything in that soul that he desires to, and that soul's eternal. Right. Just any little creed that you want to say a few prayers or run over a few beads or, or uh, do a certain thing a certain way, make a certain bow or see how it is. Oh, ho, ho. Satan's a better businessman than you'll ever be. That's right. But I want to ask you something. Then when you, we feel that we're somebody, that's when we're nothing. So he, when he stood there, he began to have that inferiority complex. He said, I know what I'll do. I know where he's going to pass because he's going over to Leviticus restaurant. And that has to come down the street straight just as you leave Hallelujah Avenue here. So I go down the street called straight and there I'll wait for him because he's got to pass by that way. And when he passes by, there I'll tell him. So down the street went this little strutting fellow with his face red because he wasn't respected as a businessman. So down the street he went. And he gets down there to Straight Street. And he stands on the corner, well groomed, waiting. Just wait till he turns the corner of Hallelujah Avenue. I'll tell him as he passes by. And he's standing there and he happens to remember that same crown. They will meet him at the gate. will be double time it gets here. And I'll be just as little here as I was down there. So I won't be able to see him. They'll just run over the top of you. See, God has a way of doing things. He made him little for that purpose. (laughs) But he, he said, well, anyhow, you know, I've just got a good idea. And he had to stand and look, and there was a sycamore tree standing there. Now, that's my native tree of Indiana, but in them days it was called, I think, an olive tree or something, was the right name for it. So he said, you know, the limbs are kind of high, but if I could get up there in that tree, nobody would step on me up there. And then I'd see when he passes by, and as soon as I lay my eyes on him, I'll make up my mind right then what he is. See, Rebecca was still praying with me. So, that gets up and think, but I'm too short to get to the first limb. <laughs> That's the way a lot of us get to <laughs> I'm too short for the first limb. So, well, if you want to see, you know, God will make a way for you to see. <laughs> it may be ridiculous, but God will make a way for you to see. Yes. And, you know... It, you might have to even come to a full gospel businessman's meeting some morning, very ridiculous to your prestige. <laughs> but if you want to see him, God will make a way for you to see him. You say, I hear they're having a meeting down there, and oh my, uh, they're, they're shouting, they're, you know, I'll just go in because I don't really believe it. <laughs> but I'll just go down and see what to do at one of these breakfasts, you see. God will make a way for you to see it, all right. <laughs> And then little Zacchaeus got an idea. Excuse me, I'm about to deafen you here. I've been used to preaching outdoors in stadiums and so forth, so I don't mean to be yelling at you, friend. But uh, Zacchaeus got an idea that if he could get to that first limb, there would nobody be that tall. So when Jesus came down the street, he would see what he looked like. And then he'd draw his idea of what he was. Then if he didn't like him, he'd tell him all, right out of the tree. So then... How is he going to get up this tree now is the next thing. So the garbage collector hadn't come by yet. And there was a garbage pail sitting on the corner. Well, he thought, <laughs> that would be ridiculous, but it's about the best way to hit the first limb. Yeah. <laughs> so he looks all around to be sure that nobody's around. He goes down to the garbage pail and he tries to lift it up. 
and the collector hadn't been by yet, you know, so it was sealed up. But that's the only thing in sight. So he'll have to use it. Well, he's got his best robe on. Now what's he going to do? Well, you know, if God's determined for you to see him, you'll see him anyhow, no matter what you have to go through. If there's something there pulling, you might be intellectually over the top thinking one thing, but God's down here working in the heart. Rebecca had been praying. That's what made that faith last night. Been praying. So, he thinks, well, there's just one thing to do. That's get this garbage can in my arm. And he gets down. Businessman. <laughs> gets a hold of the garbage can, and here he comes. And he looks around. If there isn't Levinsky himself, the more of them watching him. Just like he went to the breakfast and he had to look over, and there's Jones sitting there. My, how God can move on a man when his wife will pray for him. Or right. He may be a big shot in the city, but God knows how to make him a little shot. Prayer does it. So he gets the garbage pail and he looks at his little face, turns red, he looks this way. Here's the shoe man. Here's the man that sells the robe. And he's, oh my, he's caught now, so he just might as well go ahead. So some of them said, Have you noticed, gentlemen, this morning? There's Zacchaeus at that breakfast, I mean, at the, um, with the garbage can in his hand. And here he goes. And he gets down to the tree, and his face is red. He's already caught the act. So you know he's getting up going out now. <laughs> you done known. You're here. <laughs> if you get in the meeting, if you get up, that, just, that shows <laughs> you already been there. So there's something moving. <laughs> so as he raises the can up and runs over and sets it down, and now look at his pretty robe, <laughs> all full of garbage. The businessman of the city, outstanding businessman. All right, the first thing he does is climb up on the top of Levinsky and then goes on down the street saying, you know, our friend Zacchaeus here runs the famous restaurant down there at um, Grouch Avenue. See? He, um, he also has become... The collector, he's the garbage disposal of the city. All his little faces burning. Oh, my, his righteous indignation had rose. Maybe we should tell Rabbi that he has, the Rev Doctor, you know, PhD, that he has, one of the members of his church has become a, a, the collector of garbage in that great aristocratic church that he goes to. And so after they had passed, little Zacchaeus gets up on the garbage can and he still can't reach the lid. Now he's in an awful place, so he just shinnies up the tree. Well, I don't know where you know shinny up the tree means. That's a southern expression. Tie her up. Get a hold of it. Just pull up. And so he gets to the first limb and he looks over here. There he sits. <laughs> Is that in a good... <laughs> Look at a at a, a man, businessman of the city, with his robe full of garbage, hands full of splinters, <laughs> getting in a tree to look at a holy roller preacher coming up. <laughs> you can imagine what kind of oh yeah, that's what he was considered. Somebody that's called a devil, a Beelzebub, a Galilean which had a bad name to begin with, born an illegitimate child, as they thought. See, the, the world never knows him, brethren. They don't know it yet. They think we're crazy. They just haven't met him yet. Amen. So as he's sitting up there, cross-legged, weaving back and forth on this limb, now that isn't a pretty picture. A man of his uh, standing in the city, the garbage can, the flies all around. Now flies is on Zacchaeus. <laughs> and here he sets up here, full of garbage and stink, 
<laughs> spinners in his hand, all to get to see some fanatic prophet of Galilee, called a prophet, his own church against it, but to see Rebecca was still praying. That's what does it. So he thinks, now wait, if I sit here, he might see me. And you know what? I'm just remembering that Rebecca told me that that man could discern the thoughts of the mind. You know what? I'll hide from him. So he goes just a little bit higher in the tree and he finds where two limbs meet. That makes a good place to sit down. That's a good place for us all to sit down. Or two ways meet, yours and God's. That's where the decision has to be made. So he sits down on this limb and he said, Now, wait a minute. If this Galilean prophet... Now, when I go back home, Rebecca will say, Did you see him like he did to uh, Philip? Or he did to Peter? Or he, he did to some of the rest of them? How he could... Look out into the audience and discern what they were doing or their thoughts. So, sure, me sitting right here before him, he might actually look up. This olive tree is not too tall. And what if he'd have to see me sitting up here? Well, sure, he'd look at me. But, and then again, what if Levinsky would have to see me up here? And then all of them get around the tree and point their finger to me. Now, wouldn't that be something? So the best thing for me to do is disguise myself. So he gets the limbs and he pulls them all around him. Covers himself up like a good camouflage. No one can see him. And he only leaves one little leaf so he can raise it up like this. Look out. And that little leaf, he, there's no one can see him. The tree limbs are all pulled around him. And he, little bitty fellow sitting back up against the trunk of this tree. The limbs all around him. The leaves all around him. With a little leaf he can raise up and look. He said, now, nah, they'll never know, no one will ever see me here. I'm really here. Don't you worry. Somebody knows where you are. Yeah. And as he sits there a few minutes meditating, and the flies getting on him again, and he happens to hear a noise. He said, he must be coming. <laughs> It's usually a noise where he's around. You know, yeah. you always hear. Yeah. Mm. You know, in the old temple, when the priest was anointed and went into the, the temple, on his errand, on his garment, was a special made garment. And there was a bell and a pomegranate. And it required a certain type of walk that when he walked, these garments, the bell and the pomegranate, Played holy, holy, holy unto the Lord as he walked. And the only way the audience knew that he was still alive was by this noise. I wonder sometimes. <laughs> Bangor ought to know that somebody's alive. Around and it's no by the walk you do too. Holy. Holy, yeah. holy, unto the Lord. Glory. The noise gives praise and glory. Hallelujah. We're a high priest, offering spiritual sacrifice, the fruits of our lips giving praise to His name. That's what we are. The fruits of our lips giving praise to His name. Glory. Then, when he was coming around the corner, there was a great noise. And he raises up his little leaf to see. He said, no one will ever see me here. So he looks around the corner. And he noticed, pushing around the corner, came a great big man. Pushing, I'm sorry. You'll have to step out of the way. Two or three men behind him, I'm sorry. The master's on his road to his breakfast this morning. And we, we can't interrupt, sorry. Stand back. He said, that must be the description of the fellow called Peter. That man that he told who he was, his father. <coughs> that must be him that's in the lead there, pressing the people back. And just then, little Zacchaeus looks over and there's 
understood one of his of his customers. Why, he said, they got that child out here this morning. When I know that the doctor said two days ago that child was dying. If they should move that child in this early morning air, it would be death. They cannot do that. How fanatic can people get? And there the father and mother standing with this fevered baby, rolled up in a blanket, and the doctor said in my restaurant the other day when I asked about that baby, that it's dying. And it's seriously with a disease that just a little air or exposure would kill it instantly. And here that father and mother is so worked up by this fanatic preacher that they brought that baby against the doctor's rules out on the street. And now, look, they're being pressed back. Those twelve men along with him must be the one who protects him and keeps him away from the crowd. That's what Rebecca said. Well, I tell you, that man ought to be put in jail for taking that baby out. All at once, the faithful little father takes the baby into his arms and a lovely little mother runs right on out into the street and almost falls on her knees. This great man, Peter, gentle, says, Sister dear, we are so sorry. Our master can only stand so much. But oh, kind sir, my baby is dying. It hasn't got but just a few minutes to live. And I believe that one word from your master will change the whole course. All right. Jack has raised the leaf a little higher and said, What's that? Just one word. Who knows about it? Not even a sparrow can fall in the street. Who knows it? He knows your prayers for this meeting. He knows all that's gone on. Lovely, kind, sweet. And he stopped like he did the blind Barnabas just out the gate a few hours later. He couldn't have heard Barnabas cry. There's too many people screaming, carrying on his face a feet. He stopped and turned and looked back. And he said, Daughter, take your baby back home, for your faith has saved the baby. And I can see that. Did ever you hear such a fanaticism as that? And at that time, the father also raised his hand. And he said, Praise be to the living God. I believe and accept my baby's healing right now. Unwraps the baby, sets her on the street, and a little six or eight year old girl starts down the street skipping the road. That was Jesus. That was, so that's amazing. You know what? I just decided I better keep my big mouth shut. <laughs> Maybe I've been wrong. But I sure don't want him to see me. So he picked up his little leaf against it, one of his clothes, and he looks down. Here he is coming right under the tree. And he stopped. Zachary said, How glad I am that he can't see me. And he stopped. He looked up in the tree. He said, Zachary. Get out of there, come on down. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. I'm going home with you today for dinner. Glory to God. Didn't even know only know he was up there, he know who he was. I guess all of the days of his life. He was glad that he went to that place where Jesus was to pass that way. He became a member 
of the Full Gospel Businessmen's Association <laughs> of Jericho. <laughs> I'm glad to be a member of the same. <laughs> he never was the same after that. Rebecca was rewarded for her prayer. Her husband got saved that day, and Jesus eat dinner at her house. I must go home with you today, he said. And friend, you can go home with you too. There may be exactly a setting here, I don't know. He does. If you try to hide behind something to really keep from making your real confession and receiving Christ, the Holy Ghost, in your heart, you know right where you are. He speaks to you right now. The sign is Here's God. Something unusual struck me at that time. I felt I don't have to express it, Lord, not to these people to hear. I'd be a hypocrite. But I didn't finish my story. It seemed like this must be the time. Maybe there is a Zach this year of some man or some woman that you just spoke to their heart. I want to go home with you today, too. You found them sitting here at the table. They heard that you were to pass this way this morning. And they slipped down. Oh, Lord God, may they be like Zacchaeus. Climb down out of the tree and say, Lord God, if I did anything wrong, I'll make it right. If they neglected the church, if they've neglected their prayer, if they've neglected the duty as a Christian, or as a believer or a church member, if they neglected receiving the Holy Spirit, inviting you, you're knocking at their heart this morning. Grant, Lord, that right now, that such a person will move back to the little camouflage and slip right out into the open, say, Lord, go home with me today. And abide with me. I want to take you down. Maybe my praying wife's prayers is being answered. And my praying husband or mother. The prayers is answered, Lord. You found me right here at this table. I want you to know, Lord, that I recognize it's you. I'll raise my hand to you and ask for mercy. And while we have our heads down. Never put your hand. Right down in the bottom of your heart. I want you to be honest. If you receive me as your brother, the same Holy Spirit who knows it is thoughts of every heart is your name. He knows your heart and something stopped me in my message. So this is where I have you spoken to me. Don't know one raise your head and your brother is what you did. But I want you, if you feel in your heart, you hear that feel that God has knocked at your heart. Consecration is life. If something, maybe they've received him as your Savior, would you just raise your hand? Say, to me, Lord, be honest with God. God bless you. Come here. The Lord bless you. God bless you. Someone else, I, he's knocking. You want to go home with me? You want to take him home with you? Are you still going to sit well, he found you, but you refuse to come down out of the tree? Did you do that? Did you want to go home with you? You don't want him to go to your deathbed. You might refuse him this morning and he wouldn't be there at the deathbed. You can grieve with the spirit of God. God bless you. Someone else now? You say, what does it do, Brother Brandon, if I raise up my hands? Well, it changes death to life. You break every scientific rule when you raise your hand. God bless you. Science says that your hands must hang down gravitation holds it down. But there's a spirit around you and one in you. The spirit around you is the Holy Spirit. And he's saying to you, you're wrong. 
your propensity to be a Christian with all this evil in your heart. Like exactly if he thought he was a believer. You criticized the meetings. You didn't believe in the first place. Now I'm speaking to you. Well, does that mean you raise your hand then? That breaks the laws of gravitation. You raise your hand. The spirit in you has made a decision. I want Jesus. I don't care what it costs me. If I have to lose my prestige and everything, if I lose myself, I'll find this Lord in you. I'll raise my hand, God, here it is. I profess the Christian, but I've had temper and evil and everything in my heart. Take it out, Lord, with me. You found me here at the table as you did exactly as you could be. Will you raise your hand? Four fathers raise your hand, but there is one left there. God is speaking now. Do you believe me to be a spirit? One yes yes. I guess you should speak. I won't. The decision is yours. Jesus would not have got up in his and pushed him out. He had to come out on his own. And we continue to pray, Lord God. The creator of heavens and earth, the author of everlasting life, and the giver of all good gifts. Your Holy Spirit is the gift that Christ sent to us, and we love him. He is our shepherd, and we shall not want. And we're so glad that he leads us to the side of the still waters and restores our souls. He plants us by the rivers of water and the leaves shall not wither, even in death shall not wither the leaves. For if this earthly tabernacle be dissolved, we have one already waiting. Nothing can wither, we got eternal life. God's own life dwelling in us by the Holy Spirit that cannot perish. It must be raised up for Christ promises. And I pray now that you will bless us exceedingly, abundantly. These who raise their hands, and for those who should have done it and did not. And I pray, God, that this spirit of love among the brethren and sisters, that it will never die. It will always be alive among them, Lord, and the differences will all be under the blood. And a fellowship will exist until Jesus comes and we'll be blended together as one great body. Grant it, Father. Bless those who are here that sick as I know now they are, seeking help from you. Let them know that that which is speaking to them is the Holy Spirit. He is the healer of all of our sickness. And we pray that He will now heal every disease at the moment, taking away the weakness and diseases of the bodies of those children who strangers to the world. Your own dear children, grant it, Father, may when we go from here this morning, may we go happy, rejoicing, healed and well, renewed in our spirits and hearts, and we can go to the different corners and testify to gas stations and what more. Jesus remains the same Lord. Grant it, Lord. Bless the ministers here this morning, too. The businessman. May their business prosper. Let us all know that the most and greatest business that has the need today is the business of our Father, God. May we be about His business as His dear children, conducting ourselves as Christian gentlemen and Christian ladies. Grant it, Father, while we ask it in Jesus' name, my friend. Amen. You feel real good. I've probably got five minutes more. Are you in a real big hurry? I just want to say something to you. The reason that I am where I am today in this full gospel range is because I believe in I believe that our bodies came from the dust of the earth. We're all aware of that. 
The Bible says it first, science proves it. We're made of 16 elements of the earth. Petroleum, potash, cosmic light, so forth. Adam. Then if that be so, when this world was nothing but a bleached volcanic, our bodies laid on this earth. Just a little encouragement for you. People think I'm a mystic. And an isolation that I'm not. I'm your brother, yes. I'd like to go home with you for dinner. Really have some real fellowship. There's a room upstairs waiting for me. I can't be a servant of God and a servant of man at the same time. I'm a slave of the two myself. Pray. Just across the river, I'll be with you again. It's later than we think. We must get the speed in the earth and all that spending some time ago, right at the Fifth War, or the Last World War. They was out there flying men and women hooked up in harnesses. Little children running before, packing the lands at night, they must scratch the ground. If they don't break the surface somewhere, get them seed in there, they'll all starve the next year. They got to get that in before the snow comes. They must get it in. There's no night. They can't stop no time. Lanterns, they couldn't use tractors. They had none. They put the women, the harnesses on them to pull the hair just to scratch the ground. The man right behind got to get the seed in. Or there'll be no crop. Brethren, sisters, it's later than you think. We've got to scratch the ground somewhere. There's no stopping day and night. We've got to get the seed, the word, in the, in the hearts of the people. If they don't, there'll be no harvest. It's from the earth that comes.